Welcome back to Franchising Stronger Together. I'm your host, Red Boswell, with the IFPG International Franchise Professionals Group. We're joined today by a great leader in franchising, good friend, Alex Bingham. Alex is the, did I say Alec? Alex? <laughs> Alex Bingham, come on. It's late in the day here. I'm only on fifth coffee. Uh, Alex is the president and CEO of The Little Gym. And I don't know if you, if you don't... It, if you don't have kids, you may not know the little gym, but if you have kids, you know the little gym. Alex, welcome to the call today. Thanks so much, Red. I appreciate you having me. And I, I promise you, I've been called a lot worse than, than <laughs> Alex. So, we're, so, so you're, you're, you're fine, man. No worries. I'm getting lazy here. Uh, uh, no worries. So you are hunkered down at home, I can see. How are yeah. things going with you and the family? <laughs> yeah, it, you know, uh, it, um, Red, we're, we're, we're very fortunate. Our, our families, uh, knock on wood, so far healthy and and we're fortunate enough to have a house that we have that our kid, we can spread out at least a little bit and, and not be on top of each other um I, I think of all the people who are in in metropolitan areas and living you know people living in downtown new york or downtown chicago or those sorts of things where they're in tiny apartments and really cooped up we're, we're fortunate enough to have a backyard that kids can run around in and that sort of thing and so so we're, we're doing just fine it is it is a bit different working out of i'm, I'm literally working out of my garage here and uh, it is in fact my wife's workshop. Essentially, um, she she has her own her own business, uh, making baby goods and uh, blankets and that sort of thing, and and onesies and rompers and and like and uh, bibs that sort of thing. And so that's this is all her inventory behind me and all this other stuff. But but uh, she's been she's been gracious enough to let me kind of invade a little bit of her space during this time. And I know you're sort of wet uh, on kind of the Pacific coast. Whereabouts are you? New, We're in New Scottsdale. Scottsdale. I'm in Scottsdale, Scottsdale. Arizona. Yeah, Scottsdale. Fantastic. Um, we won't be. Hey, the uh, Franchise Expo West is coming your way soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. if, if, if conventions can still be a thing, right? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. we are committed to them being a thing. That's right. That's uh, right. The sanity here. I That's used to right. have a exactly. full head of hair a few months ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, so tell us, uh, put it in perspective, Little Jim. Who is the Little Jim? Your size, your scope, uh, your model. And then we're going to talk about after that, uh, I'll ask you some questions about how you've been affected. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the Little Gym um, is a children's development franchise, a, a children's enrichment franchise, actually, more accurately said. Um, we we um, help kids uh, learn and grow in what we call three dimensions, get moving, brain boost, and citizen kid. Really, the, the goal of it is to holistically help kids grow and develop. Um, and so... Um, we, we've been doing that now for the, the concept's been around for 44 years. Uh, we've been franchising for 27. We have uh, 443 gyms worldwide. Uh, that's 216 in the U.S. and English-speaking Canada. Um, and then uh, another 227 in 32 other countries around the world. Mm. And uh, if I recall, because you and I have, uh, IFPG does a lot of business with you, that you started there when you were two. And uh, have it, you haven't been working there consistently since you were two, but man, they almost changed the name to Alex Bingham and Associates because, I mean, <laughs> you've been there so long. Uh, <laughs> I've been involved for quite some time. Yeah, I've got, um, I, 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 was a, I was a student at the original Little Gym. I mentioned it was, it was founded 44 years ago, so not too long after the concept was founded, before it was ever a franchise. Uh, my mom was, was one of the earlier consumers of the product and was taking me to classes at the Little Gym. Um, for three years, my little brother went through the program as well, and um, and so so um, I, I I know the business from that perspective. I was an instructor uh, when I was in college during the mid '90s, right after it had begun franchising, and then um, I've been I've been involved since uh, steady now for almost 19 years. Um, wow! And and in tons of different roles um, in gyms. I've been a franchisee of ours. Um, I owned a franchise for a couple of years, and then um, held a ton of different roles and and operations all the way up. Uh, to where to where I sit today. Well, that's uh, a perfect trajectory. You've done it all. You can relate to everybody at every level of the organization. I, truly, all the way down to all the way down to to customers and and kids. And I'm 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 now also a customer of of our local the little gym. We had a gym open up about uh, ten minutes away. For we were we were traveling about thirty minutes to the nearest gym um, with my two young kids. I've got a four year old and a two year old. But they they we now have one that's about ten minutes away, which is really nice because it's it's more convenient. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I had to give him a special deal to make that happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Help my family out. Exactly. Um, Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> I need you. I'll be yeah. customer number one, I promise. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, working a deal. I, 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 if you reduce the franchise fee, I'll give you yeah. one year off. Free yeah, membership. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, had, I had to refrain from negotiating my own, my own, uh, my own personal tuition fees in there. <laughs> that would hurt your item 19. So. It would. It would have <laughs> item 19. Couldn't do it. All right, man. Let's hit the topic that ain't fun to talk about. I know y'all been hit hard. Um, let's talk about how the organization has been hit and sure. how you've pivoted, how they've pivoted, how you've helped them. Uh, just help us understand that. And, you know, in doing this, we're doing this not just to, for me to be your uh, private uh, counselor <laughs> through this, <laughs> but really to support and give back to the community, help other franchisors who may, might have a relatable piece uh, sure. th think of a new idea or a new way they can support their organization. Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, I mean, it, it is, it's, it's, uh, I know that we're not alone when we say it's had a tremendous impact, um, but it's, it's, it's hit our industry, I think, harder than most um, because we really are reliant on brick and mortar um, and our, our, as, as businesses, as other businesses that rely on that, like um, restaurants as an example, we're able to pivot to offering curbside. You can't really run, curbside classes right <laughs> and so so for for us um it's it, all all of our domestic gyms um were closed we just had our first one uh, reopen earlier this week uh, we have a handful more starting to reopen next week but but for uh, a lengthy period there all of our gyms domestically were closed in fact all our gyms worldwide at one point were, were closed um and we've had a handful in europe start to reopen now um but but overall uh kind of staying focused domestically um it was, it was, it was difficult. I mean, it's been, it's been difficult to, to have all of our, all of our gyms shut down. We, we were fortunate, I think that we, we, we saw the potential for something like this coming. Um, and so we, we actually began preparing for it a few weeks early um, and started really thinking about what would it look like if we did have gyms that had to close um, either, either individually, regionally or nationally um, to start to pivot to offering virtual classes. And so uh, really within a week of our gyms closing, we were able to roll out uh, lesson plans and, um, and all sorts of marketing support materials and that sort of thing for our franchisees to start offering uh, classes either from individuals in their gyms, but for children at home or, um, or for, for instructors working from their homes um, to, to be able to offer programs. Um, and, and initially we made those free programs so that really out of social consciousness to try to do a good thing for the community to keep all kids active, not just our customers. Um, we've, we've maintained that and ha still have some free experiences available. We've now rolled that into uh, a virtual subscription service that is offered through Zoom. So we have, we have classes that are, that are now interactive. The, originally, they were either through YouTube or Facebook Live. So they're really one-way experiences. And so those are, some of those are still available for people that aren't customers. So, um, but, Alex, but for those I'll, that are customers, yeah. I'll interrupt you. Sorry. I'm curious. On when you were pivoting big time and going yeah. online and donating, I guess is the right word, mm -hmm. offering free uh, little gym experiences from home, did you have – because I've seen some trends here. Did you have anything on your website that said you can donate some money to help support this, but no obligation kind of thing? Or do you have people asking, how did the let me help you in some free way because you were blessing me uh, work out? Yeah, I, you know, and it, we, we, we didn't do that. We, um, we had some franchisees that, that kind of reached out to their, to their customers. We, we did have, um, we had some franchisees that really I think the focus for us has been proactive communication. Uh, we've, we've really worked with our franchisees to try to be very proactive with their customers um, and, and really try to create a lot of touch points with them. And just really our, our brand is one that is so focused on family and that kind of togetherness. And it's, there's, there's a, there are a lot of personal relationships that our franchisees have with their customers. So we wanted to be able to take advantage of that and leverage that. Uh, we, we didn't have them ask specifically for donations. And we had a couple of franchisees that asked about that. And so I think a couple of might have might have reached out in that way. Um, but, but, um, we have actually had a number of customers kind of just volunteer that to different franchisees anyway. And that's, and it's been really wonderful. It is a, it is a, a kind of people trying to help other people sort of, sort of story and feeling, which is really, really nice. And did the franchisee pay royalties on those donations? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, actually, I mean, <laughs> and it's, that's been, that's been another thing, of course, is that we're, we're working, working with our franchisees on royalties and that sort of thing too, and trying to, trying to keep, 
keep as many of them involved and engaged through this process as we can too and trying to offer a super a really high level of service but but allow them to minimize their expenses through this too and so trying to trying to defer some things and kick some things down the road but we've also had franchisees that have 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 asked to keep paying us. I mean, they've asked, they've reached out and said, hey, you know, you guys are doing a really great job providing service and support. We appreciate everything you're doing and we want to keep paying you. We, we have the ability to and we want to keep doing it. Great. So you've you've offered deferment, but yes, yeah, many haven't. We've, we've, some have taken it, some haven't. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've, we've mo most have taken it because they don't have a whole lot of cash flow. Um, uh, that, they're now with the subscription services that we've rolled out. Um, and some of them did continue to, at least for a short time, collect monthly payments from their customers and accrue some makeups for classes because there are opportunities for people to be able to come make up classes. But that was really with the idea that maybe this was only going to be a short term closure. And now that it's dragged out for um, eight weeks or more for many of them, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to keep accruing liabilities and makeups and things like that for customers or, or for our franchisees, but but we we were we were really proactive with our franchisees, saying, hey, if you need if you need royalty assistance, give us a call and let's work let's work through a plan to defer things and do what we got to do. And so that's been that's that most of our franchisees have taken advantage of that, and um, and we're happy to keep working with them. Now you talked about the the very high importance of communication, lots of touch points yes. on communication. How much of that communication? Because I heard some we's, but I wasn't sure if it was we you corporate, we you the franchisees, between you and the Z, between the Z and the. So yeah. how much of the communication to the end user, that consumer, mm -hmm. is from corporate versus the yeah. Z, and and let's include now versus three months ago. Sure. How yeah. Does it change? Um, almost all of it is from the franchisee to the consumers. Um, we are providing a lot of templates and a lot of scripts and those sorts of things. Um, but we're, we're sending almost no communication directly from us because as I said, our, our relationship is so, or our, our, our business is so relationship based. Um, the, the, the end consumer's relationship is not with, uh, with the little gym international. It's with the local franchisee and with their team and that's who they know and that's who they care about. And so we want, we want them to be able to maintain that connection. We want to provide all the tools um, and, and, but kind of remain in the background. Um, I think th there are, there are maybe going forward some places where we may start to cultivate more of a relationship with the end, um, end user. Honestly, I can foresee that, foresee that happening, um, o only to kind of supplement the relationship that they already have and just kind of create more positive brand connection. Um, but that's, that's really been the way that we've been operating kind of pre pre pandemic and now, now during pandemic as well. Um, but I, like I said, I, I could I could foresee in the future that potentially us having a, a little bit larger role on, and kind of stepping out onto the stage a little bit to along with our franchisees. Well, that's a great dovetail to look into the future. So yeah. what other how do you see this moving forward? You're not get. I mean, they're opening up. Um, yep. You're you're transitioning back to the to real life. Um, yes. But is anything going to remain? Any of this yeah, digital? I'm Oh yeah, I, I think so. You know, one of the things again about our business, it, it's it is similar in many ways to restaurants and that sort of thing. Um, social distancing also has a pretty tremendous impact on the business model. Um, so in the in the short term, where we're where gyms are reopening, but they're reopening with a lot of different restrictions on how many people can be in the space, how close they ha you know, how how far apart they have to be, and trying to tell. I mean, I as I mentioned, I have a four year old. I, I, I can't explain social distancing to my four-year-old. I can't, I can't, there's, there's not a circumstance where I'm going to be able to tell him, hey, you have to stay, stay six feet away from me. He's just going to look at me and what? what are you talking about? Um, and so, so I think we, we have an added kind of variable in here of trying to manage social distancing with kids. Um, and, 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 so it, it, and, and just in general, the capacity of classes is significantly reduced. And so um, revenue opportunities we're, we're going to have to continue to find additional revenue opportunities for our franchisees. And we're really seeing this as an opportunity to reimagine the business model a little bit and, and, and potentially restructure um, some of the costs in, in the model um, and also really try to diversify revenue streams. And so the, the virtual model I expect to um, stick around and actually become hopefully a, a part of our long-term business model. Um, and I think there are other opportunities for us to find other streams of revenue. And so I think, it, you know, you, you, you always try to find, the opportunities in challenging times like this. And, and that's really the way we're trying to, trying to approach it. Well, I know someone that makes some good onesies. Yeah, uh, for... yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm looking at her. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's going right here, right Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, she's, she's making masks right now. That's what she's pivoted. She's pivoted her business also. She's making masks for people, so. Nice, okay, yeah. wow. Yeah. Our, a, new, a, new, a new segment of business for her. 
hey, at, at IFPG retreat, we're looking at having some fun and maybe having uh, in our goodie bag a little IFPG mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's I think that thing, that's going to be around for a little while too. Uh, so there's a, a semi-related business uh, that we work with a lot, do a lot of deals with, Urban Air. You know, they're okay. an indoor mm -hmm. uh, amusement park, right? Yep. A, a, a right. bigger a bigger investment, but they actually went out to their their consumers and mm -hmm. did a pretty thorough survey. Yep. And one in, uh, interesting question they had was, what do we got to do to get you back in? Right. What do we got to do to get you, the mom and dad, mama really, mm -hmm. comfortable allowing your kids to enter our building and go crazy? Because yep. that's what they do in yours. That's what they do in theirs. Right. Little older age group probably in theirs. Sure. Uh, have you heard any, I don't know if the franchisees are asking this question, if y'all are asking them, if you're both asking them, but any response that's sort of a general message you're hearing from your end user? Yeah, so uh, you, our, we've, we actually, I actually saw that specific survey from Urban Air, one of our franchisees got it and forwarded it to us. So I, that, that was, I thought it was really well put together and, and we were able to draw some inspiration from it. Um, and, and what we did was we actually um, took some took some inspiration from that and from from some other other thoughts and surveys that we'd seen as well and we we put together a survey template for our franchisees to send out just because we, we we believe that um each individual market because the the regulations are going to be different based on states and, and local governments that that responses might be different as well and so rather than us asking the question and trying to parse the data on a national basis um we, we wanted franchisees to be able to gather their own data and really make their own decisions um but we have i mean we've we're just starting to get some of that feedback now, honestly, Red. I don't have any strong conclusions from it, but I can tell you from the experience that our, our gyms in Europe have started to have and, um, and, and what I expect is going to be similar in the U.S. anyway, um, is, is that those customers that are ready to come back are extremely enthusiastic about coming back. And I think it makes sense logically that those, those people, they're, there's, they're kind of two different ends of the spectrum where I think a lot of people are right now. And, and one of them is, we just want to get back to normal. We just want to, we just want to go. Like get, get me out of the house. I just want to go and do something. And then, and then the other side is saying, Hey, I, I, I'm concerned about this. I'm not sure if it's time yet. I'm not sure if it's safe and I'm not ready to do anything yet. And so those, those that are anxious to go, they're going and, and they're very enthusiastic about being there. Um, those that are not ready yet, they are, they're staying back, but they're really not saying a whole lot. They're not really communicating a whole lot. They're just kind of still hold up and they're still kind of, they're still, they're still, um, they're still just keeping their really keeping their distance, um, mm -hmm. and 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 that's absolutely fine. And that's really the way that we've been approaching this. We've we've created some a lot of tools for our franchisees to really prepare for this. We have brand new cleaning and disinfecting procedures, um, and we have social distancing guidelines for how to how to conduct classes um, under social distancing. All our other products as well, birthday parties and camps and all those sorts of things. Um, and so they're having to train a lot of their their staff and get get them ready to go but i think that that a lot of the communications and we built we've really built a kind of a restarting kit for our, for our franchisees and a lot of the communication to customers is around hey here are all our new procedures and um and and if you're not ready yet that's okay we respect that here's some here's some information about our subscription service if you'd like to take advantage as well and so we have that that's that's another reason i think that subscription service is going to be around for a while agreed love that restart kit yeah um what about, so your, your, your franchisees, a lot of the best ideas come from our franchisees Absolutely. in the field. Yeah. Um, they, they helped you, no doubt, with the whole let's go virtual. Any other, oh, yeah. any other ideas that came with? I love to call it stories of triumph. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I mean, that, that we, we had, one of the things that I think is, is really uh, going to outlast however long this, this crisis lasts, uh, um, and that's the way I'm trying to look at this. this, this crisis has got a finite time period. I don't know what it is, but it's, this, this is gonna be finite. Um, a, a lot of the positives that come out of it, though, I think will long outlast the, the challenging times that we're facing right now. And, um, and, and one of the things that I think is going to, we've always had such a great relationship with our franchisees um, and such great alignment with them, but I think this crisis has brought us even closer together as a, as a franchise community. Um, and, and, um, so I think the, the, we had franchisees that really immediately, um, when we started rolling out virtual classes, then, uh, started repurposing some of our other programs virtually as well. And, and so we've been working in conjunction with them to hone those things and then to pull them together and, and push them back out to the entire franchise community as a whole. And so it's really been a lot of collaboration and a lot of cooperation between us and our franchisees, um, to, take all of our programs virtually um, to, and to, to really kind of to, to work through that whole process. 
And how, uh, so before the crisis, during the crisis, and after the crisis uh, prediction, how often are you having communications globally with your, I don't know if you can do it globally with all the different time zones you're in, but yeah. how has that looked before yeah. and how's it changed? So um, we I, I, pre-pandemic, I was doing quarterly Facebook live events with our franchise community. Um, and that was really the, the only time that we did anything that was really global. Like we, we do, we do weekly, um, e-blast, we would host webinars that were situational and things like that for our franchise community. And, and I'm speaking really about the domestic franchise community. We do things for the international franchise community as well, but it's pretty rare that we have everybody globally on the same, on the same platform. They're invited, but most of the time it's, it's, it's just domestic franchisees. And I say domestic, I mean, U S and English speaking Canada. Um, but then, then, um, since since the since the pandemic, uh, we're doing um, probably at least two to three times a week, and sometimes more. Um, and and that that is, I'm doing um, just chats, really. I mean, question and answer sessions with our franchisees. I was doing them weekly for the first four or five weeks. Uh, I, I for for a couple of weeks in there, I did it kind of every other week, and now I think I'm transitioning back to doing them weekly again. Um, just because in between when I was doing them every other week, we were releasing a lot of this new information. And so I didn't want to, we didn't want to overwhelm them, uh, with more things, but, but we are doing a whole series of webinars on an ongoing basis. And, and I will tell you, it's been extremely well received by our franchisees. I think post pandemic, we probably won't do them with quite that level of frequency because one of the, one of the reasons we were able to do them with that frequency is because franchisees didn't have a whole lot else to do. I mm. mean, um, they had, they had some virtual classes to offer and that sort of thing, but the, most of the other day-to-day -day activities sort of ground to a halt. And so now, um, now with things starting to pick back up, they, there will be more demand on their time. So we won't be able to do them with quite that level of frequency, but it, it will certainly be more frequently than, than quarterly. And, and I'm certain more frequently than monthly as well. It might be once a week or, or once every other week, that sort of thing. Um, and, and, and then more frequently as needed. Question I've not asked anyone else. This, sure. is a, this is a new topic. I'm actually doing an IFA webinar next Friday on this topic. So Great. I'm going to hit you with it right now. Awesome. Conventions. Conventions. Conventions in the second half of 2020 is the topic on this IFA convention, uh, uh, big webinar I'll be hosting. And it is a hot topic for anybody that had planned or is planning a convention in the second half of the year. What's y'all's plan? Okay, so we actually had a uh, convention planned for the very start of the second half of the year. It was, it was uh, second week in July. We had we had a con we had our convention planned. We actually call it a reunion, um, and and to kind of capitalize on the on the family feel of our brand, um, and and we have um, we haven't officially canceled the event yet. But but I actually let the the franchisees know yesterday. The, the question came up again, and I told them it was really trending towards not being able to to hold the event we didn't feel. Uh, and yesterday I told them, I, I don't foresee the circumstance in which we'd be able to have it. It was, it was, it's been, it's been essentially canceled at this point, unfortunately. Where was um, it going to be? It was going to be in Portland, Oregon. We were really looking forward to it. Um, and, and, and it's, 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 we've had to cancel it for a number of reasons, obviously financially for our franchisees. We didn't feel like that was the place for them to be spending their capital at that point. I think it's questionable as to whether or not it'll be, considered safe to have a have a convention of that size at that time um, and just with all the uncertainty around that and then the logistics that needed to go into it it's it's certainly not the same scale as the olympics obviously but it is a, it is those sorts of, those are the sorts of things or this the logistics of it that that are that that require a cancellation and a time frame I, it, I i i hope when we get to july we'll look at it and go geez we could have done it um and but but i i i'm I'm skeptical that, that it would have been the right decision for us anyway. Any idea where you might move it to? I mean, timeline when you might move it? I, I think what we're, our plan right now is actually to um, just forego a convention for this year of, of, of in, in that structure. Um, we will look to deliver content virtually that we would have likely delivered at that convention anyway. But I think that most of that content's all changed already anyway. Um, and so it, we're going to, but we, we will look to continue to deliver content virtually like we did. Um, we have another event that we typically have held in November here in Scottsdale for uh, a large group of franchisees. It's not the entire it's not the entire franchise community, but it's been for a large a large segment of the franchise community, um, and it's been owners only, not team members like our, our our reunion also included. And we're considering potentially repurposing that event into a, a kind of a convention light, maybe a reunion light sort of event. Um, and so we're thinking about that. That that may be something that we do. Um, but then also, uh, we'll look, we'll look to have our, our next reunion next July. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And November yeah. would should should come through with flying colors. I, I would I would think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would think I would think I would think that 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 hopefully we're in a position, our franchisees are in a position for, for us to get together. I think we could all use that sort of that sort of experience right now. But yeah, I've had some people say, Red, can you talk about franchise development at the beginning of these? That's what I'm really interested in. <laughs> you know, as as my posse that always asks me that one. Sure. So uh franchise dep. Uh two pieces. First, how did the candidates fair that we're in process when this all sure. went down and then yeah. what's the new pipeline look like yeah so um the 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 people that were in the pipeline pre-covid uh several of them have have said you know let us just pause for right now let us see how this plays out there's a lot of uncertainty out there and and frankly i don't blame them that's that's what i would do if i was if i was in their shoes as well i would say hey you know let, let me see how this plays out let me let me get a feel for the landscape when all is said and done we've had a couple of candidates though that have been um very very bullish on wanting to continue down the path so we have a couple of candidates that are that are nearing completion um of of the process which is exciting uh honestly and then we have others that are continuing to express interest and i i read an article um at the start of this that said Hey, be really careful about pausing anything from a from a franchise development standpoint, or or taking your foot off the gas, or stopping the focus there, because with with a lot of people working from home right now and not having maybe their boss looking over their shoulder or that sort of thing, they may start thinking about where their other opportunities may come and and how that may look down the road. And and I thought that was interesting advice, and and, and it makes sense to me. And so I think uh, that while the pipeline may not fill up right now, I do expect that the pipeline. Uh, may fill up as as things start to emerge from from the pandemic here. And so I, I might have written that article actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree completely. Yeah. Uh, what is the new pipeline looking like? Yeah. The new so the new pipeline it's 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 been slower right now. Um, but we've we've had we have um our our director of franchise development who you know really well, Ron Cordova, is um he's working with with several new candidates in the process. It's not it's not the, not at the same rate that it was. Uh, Pre-COVID, but he's continuing to um, field calls and and receive interest uh, from from uh, prospective franchisees, which is which is also really exciting to see. That that is very encouraging. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Alex, any closing comments, suggestions, predictions for franchisors? Oh well, let's see, I, I'm going to stay away from predictions because I think in the level in, in 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 the uncertainty that we have out there right now, uh, uh, it's it's difficult to really predict what what's to come. I think that the, the, the only advice that I would have is, and I think it fits for franchise development. I think it fits for franchise operations. I think it fits for consumers and end users. And it's just something that is, that I've been reminded of consistently through this. And I think that served us um, at, at our organization well, which is just to, to, to be 100% transparent in all the communication that you have um, with everyone. Don't be, don't be afraid to, to share, um, it, really everything, the full picture, uh, the good news and the bad news, and 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 really what it looks like. Is that I think in times of of uncertainty like this, um, you have to be willing to to lay it out there, and 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 sometimes that creates vulnerability, but that's okay. It, that's that's actually a good thing. It's and and during times like this, it's empowering, and so um, that's 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 the only that's I think that's that's been one of my guiding principles and our organization's guiding principles, I think it served us well. And I think a lot of other organizations are doing the same thing. It's serving them well also um, for their franchisees, for their consumers, all those sorts of things. And, and, and so uh, anybody, anybody out there, I'd, I'd encourage them to, to, to think down that path for sure. A very strong message to end on. Thank you to Alex Bingham, president and CEO of the little gym on franchising stronger together. Thank you, Alex. Thanks so much, Fred. I really appreciate it. My pleasure.